Welcome to part two of this build series. I've been working more on the CAD model and especially on the front arms and these bed mounts. I've also worked on the rear mounts. These are a bit easier to do. One thing I forgot to mention in the previous video was that I'm using overlapping flex plates on the heat bed. That will prevent a continuous gap between the heat beds and that will improve the results. I'm sticking to the plan of including everything into the CAD model, that includes the skirts as well. The feet on this one will be just like a trident, you can just follow the assembly guide for the trident. Pretty straightforward stuff. I'm still amazed about the print quality from the Voronish one, it's, uh, it's been great. These are some compressor feet I had from a previous build. I do get a lot of very interesting comments and I got one for the previous video. At first I found it slightly annoying, but uh, this guy has a point. I could just use longer set extrusions. On the other hand, I don't use bad and Voron in the same sentence, but I guess he's right. I could have created some Scandinavian vintage Bang Olufsen style with aluminium and uh, light wood panels, but I'm going to stick to this slightly nerdy Voron design. I like it, and this is the front of the printer. This is the side of the printer with a main inlet and one fan. All these skirt components are taken from a Trident build or slightly changed from a Trident build, and they attach to the aluminium extrusion with M3 8mm bolts and you can mix and match just like Lego. This is a fan on the side of the printer will be constantly running. I printed some covers for the printer. Some of these are a bit rough but I plan to have resin on top of this. Below the covers I have something I call a bridge. It's just a simple part made up of two different identical components. I printed these parts in Eason PET, didn't like that filament much, it was stringy and I didn't like the quality. That said, they will not be visible. I'll just add some resin and this will be great. This is the front bed arm from the Lemon Breeze printer. This is rigid, it's actually too rigid and creates problems for a 4 point Z tilt. I wanted to try out a different design and did this prototype on the Lemon Breeze. It worked great, but I wanted to make it look a little bit better. And this is the final result. It's very basic with the bearing and this plastic spacer. I printed the part in Isonmate ASA. And this is printed without support. I think it came out great. To keep the bearing in place I need a clamp and a clamp uses a couple of brass inserts. I keep buying these. I don't know how many I bought but it's got to be close to 1000 by now. Then you just pop in the bearing, use the clamp on top of that. The bolt inside and then you just use the spacer. It will then connect to the extrusion like this and it can tilt up or down independent of the other side of the printer. These are the revised uh, rear arms. The only change from my previous build was that I changed the height of these uh, spherical bearing mounts to get them more in line with the front arms. And these are printed in ASA. 
I really hate working with the angle grinder, but I need to cut these 12 mm rods and also the lead screws and I'm using some jigs for that. You could use almost any type of stepper motor for this. I'm using one that came off an old printer. I'm going to use a thrust bearing. That's just to relieve some weight from the stepper motor shaft. I use this adapter ring to get the bearing to match the motor mount and of course a rigid coupler. When attaching the motor, it's practical to have the connector facing the opposite side of the printer. M3 12mm is probably the right size for this. We'll then pop in the adapter for the thrust bearing. Lower part, then the bearing and then the upper part and press that firmly down against the stepper motor face with the coupler. And tighten it properly. At this stage it will be tempting to add the lead screws, but don't. We will now prepare the nuts for the lead screw. And I'm using 10 millimeters M3 with a M3 nylock. And these shouldn't be too tight. It should be possible to move the palm nut so we don't transfer every movement from the lead screw. And we then just pop in the bearings, linear bearings. I have provided for a brass insert, but I'm not using that in this build. So these are the front and these are the rear brackets. We can now install the 12 mm rods. These can be snug. You might need to do some changes to get these to fit. Remember to slide on these bed arms. It will be difficult later. I have made a simple jig just to check the distance from the extrusion to this rod. And this is the top part holding the rod. It can be installed like this and then just slide under the top extrusions and there's some clearance. I recommend putting the printer on its side, easier to insert the nuts for this. Do the same thing the rear of the printer I'm testing again with the same jig just using the other side of it and adjust as necessary there are two extrusions for the bed assembly or the sub assembly as one front and one rear extrusion, standard 2020 extrusion. This is the front extrusion connected to the bed arm. The same on the other side and we check this these are parallel and will move smoothly and this seems to be okay these are the bed brackets just a mirrored pair of brackets they will be mounted to the extrusion like this and the heat bed Assembly will then be attached like this. These are the rear arms, very similar to the Trident, Warren Trident, just a little bit beefier. And this is the arm mounted onto the extrusion. I will we'll again check this for motion, moves freely, doesn't bind up. We now know that these two front and rear extrusions move freely, but we need to connect them and try to move them at the same time. This looks fine. With all of that checked out, we can move on and attach the lead screws.
We can now remove the temporary extrusion we used for testing the parallel movement. For the heat bed assembly, I'm going to use some fairly generic heat beds, 300 by 300. I tried to design this so you could use different types of heat beds with different mounting options. This is just some very plain ones. I'm using a spacer and a washer to keep the distance from the extrusion to the heat bed. And they need to be completely flush. A bed mesh can do a lot, but it can't fix a jump between two heat beds like this. With a proper starting point and a good bed mesh, you should expect some pretty good results anyway. In my larger build the Lemon Breeze, I use some oversized flex plates and I'm going to repeat that on this build, just like I mentioned in the introduction. Installing the bed assembly on the front and rear extrusions couldn't be simpler. You align the bed brackets and the extrusions for the heat bed. In my build I need to slide this closer to the front of the printer and I need some longer extrusions for that. I will get that sorted before we do part 3 of this build with the X and the Y axis. I'm getting a lot of good comments and suggestions, but just keep in mind that this is supposed to be a simple build and it's supposed to be cheap. With that said, I hope to see you back for part 3. Bye for now.